Hello everyone, this is Eric from Etiquette. Um, ready for another live stream. Ah, I just got another. Does this look better? <laughs> that looks scary. I found another light. Okay, let's get started. Bonnie Esther, you are first. Hi, good mor morning from, from Marlborough, uh, Massachusetts in the United States. Uh, Bonnie Esther, how is the weather where you are? It is a uh, uh, this weekend was uh, it was raining a lot here in South Korea where I am, and um, but then suddenly today beautiful skies, a few clouds, but very nice. Hi everyone, um, my name is Eric, and this is the Etiquette live stream every Sunday night. And um, welcome to all the teachers or English learners that join us. If you have any questions, you can ask them in the comments or. If you just want to say hi, come in the comments, uh, tell me, hi, where are you from? And join us for this chat uh, once, a, once a week. Okay, um, yeah, hi. So actually, um, something that popped up, this is Purnama uh, Gultom, and she became a YouTube member. Now, this is the Etiquette live stream. It's on Facebook, and it's also on YouTube at the same time. Uh, my name is Eric, and I'm a teacher, and we talk about teaching. So if you have any questions, just put it in the comments. And then sometimes if you you can subscribe to the YouTube channel um, and also on the channel, you can help me out by buying me a coffee. Uh, you can do um, a super chat or you can join the YouTube member program where you, I think, pay two dollars and then you help me out a lot. But uh, let's get into who's here today. Bandar, hi from Saudi Arabia. Hi, Bandar. How are you doing today? Uh, Abila Shah. Hi, Abila Shah. Um, Abila Shah, what did you think of the video on Mother's Day? So my most recent video, every Tuesday um, around this time, I usually release a video. And last Tuesday, I released a video for Mother's Day. And I also added a lot of resources and worksheets that you can use. What did you think of the video? I think... The games and activities aren't the best that I've found, but I think the worksheets might be useful to teachers out there. Kalina, how are you doing? Luza Ang, hello from Colombia. Hi, hi, Luza Ang, good to see you. Uh, Abila Shah here, we are fine in India. We are closed online classes. You closed the online classes, so it's not happening anymore. Uh, Abila Shah, yes. Um, um, I, I'm, um, I hope it's really going well in India. Uh, all our thoughts and prayers are with our friends and family in India and all the teachers there too. Um, I hope you are safe and that things get back to normal soon. Um, Awasa, hello teachers of the world. I love seeing that rainbow at the end. Hi, Bonnie. Um, and then English well, hi from Nicaragua. Hi, English well, nice to see you. Be not hello, educator. Wow, that's so nice. Being called an educator. By the way, guys, let me tell you something. Like Binod said, hello, educator. Um, let me show you what I got today for being an educator. So today I went to meet some friends. We made lunch. I made the scrambled eggs. It was great. And uh, I omelets, just food. I'm just not very good at some of the other foods. Anyway, had breakfast and then we went to play some football. And while we were on the football pitch, um, some some shy girls approached us and they they wanted to chat. And then they chat. Uh, I had a chat with them, and then they gave me these <laughs> for being a teacher. So I talked a little bit with them. I asked them some questions, and then one of the girls, she was so excited to talk to me and practice her English. She's like. Oh, teacher, would you would you like these? Well, she didn't say teacher, but she's like, oh, would you like these? And I'm like, yes, give me the Twix and this cookie, and that is going to be my payment for the, the for the classes. So, yes, for being an educator, I got paid pretty well today, I have to say. Uh, Don Fred, hi from Morocco. Hi, Don Fred. Uh, and then Natalia, hi Natalia, hi from Ukraine. Today is Easter un under the Julian calendar. Christ has risen to all of those to celebrate. Uh, Natalia, so lovely to have you here as always. Natalia, sharing lots of things on the Facebook group. Uh, Natalia, um, I hope you had a lovely day. Did you go to church um, for Easter Sunday? Is it the same? I I'm guessing it is. Um, uh, I've seen some, so when I was researching going to 
Ukraine, if possible. I, I saw so many um, really nice um, architecture and buildings. So the, 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 there must be so many great um, churches and places to go and visit. Abila Shah, yes, I saw. It was very useful. I felt so special. Of course, Abila Shah, if any of you want a video made, I go and I make that video because you guys are important to me. So, uh, yeah, if you have any questions, if there's a video you would like to see, please put it in the comments. Um, the video for this Tuesday is actually, uh, what is it again? Oh, should um, uh, L1 be spoken in classroom? So I've had many questions about this. And I made a video where it's basically um, the positives, the negatives, my opinion. And then at the end, I also share some ways that you can get you can um, motivate the students to speak more in class. Um, and from Ukraine, another Ukrainian, hi. And hello, sir, from Turkey. Merhaba, hi, Sivan, nice to have you. Hello from Nepal, Binod. Bandar, hi, Alsa, nice. Oh, everyone's saying hello. Abila Shah, I have lost, so we have lost many family members. Abila Shah, yes, uh, I'm, uh, I, I've, I was watching the news. So even for myself, someone, I don't like to follow all the news, but it felt so important to go and look it up. And yeah, I, I hope that uh, the international community helps and supports India in, the, in, in your time of need. Ping, hi, Ping, a delightful Sunday to everyone. Hello, Eric. Wow, you guys always have the best things to say. Uh, how was your Sunday, by the way, Ping? Uh, I had a nice time. I went to kick a ball around, and I feel like that uh, these every week um, I go with some friends and we kick the ball around. I suck at playing um, football, but there's something fun about it, kicking a ball to each other. Rasha, hello from Egypt. I like those starry eyes. And then Kezia. Actually, when we were kicking the ball around, we quickly spoke to Kesha. She bought this really cute Rapunzel doll. Uh, she's crazy about Rapunzel. She always has that. And then here is Shohag. He was with me playing football. Hello, so your Instagram seems like you. Can... <laughs> um, I laugh because Shohag is really good at football. And he could, uh, so I can keep the ball up for maybe 10 seconds and he keeps the ball up for like a minute. And I'm like, Shoag, what we have to do is I start kicking the ball and then we cut the film and then we put you in with the same hat and then you continue kick kicking. And then we ended with me back kicking the ball. But yeah, so much fun. Uh, Luciana, uh, hi from Brazil. And my dad is also here. Hi, dad. Angelica, hi from Poland. Wow, uh, another. A European friend to join us. Uh, by the way, guys, if you have any questions about teaching or um, if, if you have anything you want to share, by all means, put it in the comments. Um, recently, I, I, I've actually asked some, some people have asked me, Eric, in the live stream, sometimes you give really, you give not really good advice, but sometimes you give some advice on your live stream and it might be useful to members out there. So I thought, why not? So I think what I will do in the future is um, because many people, some people watch the live streams afterwards, but I think what I will do is I will cut out some useful parts of the live streams and I will um, I will post it in uh, as videos so that people can find that. And also that will, um, you know, that will also help me um, it will stop me from being stressed about producing new content. So I'll go and I'll find some useful clips from these live streams and I will share it. Leslie, hi from Peru, South America. Nice. So should we make our students adopt an accent? How important is this? English, well, um, this is a fantastic question and I don't think I've ever had it on the show. So um, let's see, um, adopt an accent. Now, um, most students or, or most people, uh, they want to adopt a, a good accent. Um, most students prefer an American accent because that's what you see in movies and that is, um, or in the media. So we kind of want that American accent. And also if they want to perhaps immigrate to America in the future, they want that accent to use. You know, uh, a lot of people think it makes them sound more sophisticated and it's uh, more easy to understand because um, let's take Avengers, for example. All the Avengers um, are known across the world and the way that they speak, their accents. So 
most English learners want to adopt a similar accent. Um, on the other side, I think about 10 to 20 percent of students actually prefer a British accent, uh, especially I found a lot of uh, Chinese students or um, old Commonwealth uh, countries, um, the students would uh, adopt a, a British accent and they really like that. And uh, also, I think with other shows like, you know, um, what is it? Um, Sherlock. Sherlock, Sherlock has a beautiful accent with received pronunciation, you know, the Queen's English. So many students want that. Now, as teachers, do we want to force a certain accent on our students? Uh, no, you, you don't want to do that. Your goal is for students to have a good sounding accent to be clear and understood. Um, but um, uh, I've I've seen some English channels talk about that, you know, if you have a bad accent, you might not be able to get a job or you might not be well understood. I think when it comes to accents, as long as you speak clearly, you will be understood no matter what your accent is. I think accent brings color to a language, right? If I speak to someone from India or someone from England or someone from France, um, and um, Ukrainian and Russian. I love hearing um, Ukrainians and Russians speak English. Um, uh, it's, it's, it sounds so sweet to me. And it would make me so sad if everybody had the same accent. So I would say, no, you don't want to teach them a certain accent unless the student specifically asked for it. What you can do is you should focus on the pronunciation being clear. Now, a lot of people have commented about my accent, for example. Um, Eric, you've got a nice accent. Where are you from? My accent, I used to speak with a British accent, a, a really lovely British accent. And then since I came to Korea, a lot of students, they, they don't understand everything British because they watch American dramas and movies. So my accent has changed over time to make it easier for most students to understand me. That's very important to me. And you as a teacher should also emphasize to your students that while you don't want to push a certain accent on them, you want them to be understood and to speak clearly and fluently. And that's what you should focus on. Um, uh, what about you guys? What, how do you feel about this? Because I think accents are beautiful, but um, there are some negatives. If you've got a bad accent, it could hamper you because uh, some bad accents, you know, are seen as um, you're not educated well enough or you might be from a bad part of town. So you, you do want to watch out for things like that. And I know there's a big debate among, among educators about that. But for me, I think it's just about um, being clear and understood and also, you know, making um, doing it in a way that is pleasant, I think is very uh, important. OK, let's see what you guys think about it. I'll quickly go through. Salwa, hi from Egypt. Uh, Jular, hi, sir. Um, Mariam, hi. Uh, I saw your video and it was really useful. Thanks for your wonderful videos. Thank you, Mariam. Uh, Fokito, hi, everyone. My dear Eric, happy to stay here with you from Mexico. Fokito, it is lovely to see you. Fokito always brings a tear to my heart, I have to say. Lisa Ang, over here Sunday just starts. I'm resting a bit. Just had the COVID vaccine yesterday morning. Luckily, no negative effects. Oh, Lisa, I'm so happy for you. So uh, you got the vaccine. You're not feeling too bad. Um, so will you have to go for the second injection or is it only one? Um, Media, hi. Uh, hello, Eric. I hope you are fine. Uh, what do you suggest to improve my speaking skill? I have no native friend, so I cannot practice. Great listening to you. You are a wonderful teacher. Hi. Uh, thank you so much, Media. Um, uh, I've, I think that the easiest thing if you're an English learner is that um, the, the, the best way to improve your speaking, if you have no friends, number one, you can find an online teacher. But I know that most people don't want to necessarily go that route. The other way that you should do it is by copying. Find, find an actor or find someone with a nice pronunciation um, who talks about topics that you are interested in and uh, try and mimic them. So listen to the way they say things and repeat after them. And whenever it's possible, try and repeat those phrases in the same way that they do so that the more you say it, the more fluent you will become. I always give the example of watching the TV show Friends because millions of English learners have learned through Friends because those actors have great pronunciation and they also use simple to understand English. 
So what a lot of English learners do is they watch the show with subtitles and then they watch it without subtitles. And every time they, they watch it and there's an expression or word that they really enjoy, they kind of copy the way that the actor say, says it. And then they try and use it as much as possible in class. And I think that's a great way to learn. And it's also very fun. Um, Russia, I like the games that you explain uh, it to do in the classroom. It's so impressive. I think we need to simplify the ideas to students in the classroom, especially grammar. 100% Russia. I think um, sometimes we try and overdo things, but to students, uh, when things are simple, uh, simple and understood, they um, they react way better to it. I think sometimes we try and complicate things because we think it's too easy. Most cases, make sure that they understand the, the basic foundation and then you can complicate things further from there. But uh, try, especially when it comes to grammar, make sure that they uh, that they understand it and it's easy. Um, let's see what everyone's saying. Guys, by the way, I'm very slow. I know um, I'm five minutes behind. Luza Ang, yes, in Asia, they use the British accent. I kind of, I really miss my British accent because um, uh, I think it, it, it used to sound so good. Uh, I got many, uh, and I never knew it, but I got a lot of compliments for my English accent. And then um, with the 10 years I've spent in Korea, it, it obviously it changed. And now I can't get it back. And I heard about these stories of actors, like um, in Hollywood, you get a lot of English actors uh, actors that they learn how to speak with an American accent. Well, Sherlock, what's his name? Benedict Cumberbatch is the same. You know, he's got a beautiful accent. And then he did Doctor Strange and he did some movies in Hollywood where he had to change his uh, accent. And then when he has to go back to England, some of them need to get training to get their accents back. Uh, who's the other one? I think it was Batman. Who's Batman again? Uh, what's the actor that played? No, not the last, uh, the, the, the recent Batman of the 2000s. What's his name again? American Psycho. He's actually English, but he did such a good job with his uh, with his accent that he sounds so so American. Uh, Letty, hi Letty, hi. I'm British, but the most important important thing is to speak clearly and confidently. Right to enjoy speaking. I always tell my students, you know, to enjoy it and to practice. But Letty, you've got a lovely accent and you know it. You've got a very lovely uh, English accent. Um, uh, MD Rafikol Islam. Bangladesh used the British accent. Is that true? Okay. I will ask my friend that was with me, Shoag. He's from Bangladesh. I'll ask him to, to if, if it's true, but I believe you. I think um, also in India and Bangladesh, a lot of the countries that, um, you know, have a close relationship with England uh, have a British accent. Luza, we as teachers uh, need sometimes to adapt our accent according to our students. Yes, I've heard this too, Luza. Um, I know that in the South, uh, so I'm part of the South African group on Facebook and the, the question often comes up where many of the, the language teachers work in academies. Uh, these academies uh, many of these academies ask them to speak with an American accent that they have to change. And I was surprised at how many South Africans or other speakers they come to, um, they come to Korea, they start working at a Hogwa or at a language academy and they, they pick up this American accent, especially a lot, a lot of the girls are very good at picking up an accent and using it when they need to. And I say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm astounded at how you change your accent. Because even for me, I can do words and I do, can do phrases, but I, I'm not very good at changing my accent. But I think it's important to change it to accommodate our students because we are there for them. You know, if I want something, if I want to learn to play um, Beethoven on piano and you're like, well, Beethoven isn't good. I want you to to play Bach, you know, um, you should play Bach this way. I'll be like, no, that's not what I want. I want to play Beethoven. It's, it's not a great example, but we should be able to accommodate our students. But anyway, on this South Africans in South Korea page, some of the members have spoken about how their language academy uh, that they work for is trying to force them to use an American accent. And I just, and many of them said, no, students have to get used to all different types of accents. I will never change my accent. But I just think, you know what? Um, I'm trying to become the best teacher I can possibly be for my students. Uh, if some of them want the British pronunciation, I will explain things to them in that way. And I will also show them the differences between the two. 
you know, uh, instead of just flat out denying and pushing people away, because how are you going to learn if you don't try and embrace different things? Yeah. Okay, Q King. Hi, Q King. How are you doing? Hello, Q King. It's uh, it's always so nice to see you. How are you doing? Um, you're um, uh, you're in Goje, Gimme. Um, in Goje, I think you are. Um, how is school? How is everything? It's Mother's Day in Spain already. Um, Leti, I thought it's next weekend. I, I I know that some countries are different, but it's today. Leti, happy Mother's Day to you. Uh, I hope it's going well with uh, your children and your grandchildren. John uh, Cartagena, Columbia. Columbia. Um, I love, uh, what do you think, John? What do you think? Um, I think there are some really famous actors and celebrities from Colombia. And I think one of the most famous that I always think about is um, from Modern Family. Uh, they, they've got a Colombian there and she's got a beautiful accent. And uh, she also, I think uh, I was watching her and she, um, I remember in one interview, she proudly said, because lots of Americans think it's Colombia with a U, but she said it's Colombia. And the way that she pronounces Colombia, Colombia, it's, it's just so sweet. Well, what do you think about her? Um, what do you think about some of the great celebrities that might have come from Colombia that you can tell us about? Uh, Luza, the vaccine was the British one, the AstraZeneca. The second dose will be in three months. Okay, uh, Luza, I, I hope that it all goes well. Join chat box. Okay, um, guys, chat box. Uh, thank you, Letty. I will promote chat box a little bit. So everyone, chat box is a group on Facebook. Let me quickly see if I can find it. Uh, it's called the chat box, uh, the chat box. And I'm going to share it here. It's a group with 5,000 members. Uh, invite, give me a copy link and I'll join it. Uh, no, not this. I'll copy the and paste the group in the chat. So basically, this is a group where you can go and practice and listen, uh, uh, practice your English in the group. It's a great group. Letty is part of it and many of the members on the live, uh, on, on this chat. So if you want to go and practice your English, go to Chatbox, uh, go and um, you can live stream with them with Zoom and watch it. And it's really good. Uh, I, I highly encourage you to go there if you want to practice your English or if you just want a community of great people to to chat with. Mrs. Abiola. Hi, Eric, and hi, everyone watching from France. Hi, Mrs. Abiola. Are you having a lovely day? Uh, let's see. I just saw it. And Natalia. Uh, unfortunately, I was not able to go to church today because of my health. What's wrong, Natalia? Uh, but Ukrainians love Easter and have a variety of traditions connected with it. No wonder it is one of the biggest and oldest Christian holidays. As you know, Ukrainians are mostly Orthodox Christians. Do you know about Ukrainian Easter eggs? A pisanki? No, I don't. Um, but Natalia, what's wrong? Um, you said health problems. Um, uh, I want to know what's wrong. And uh, so that, uh, yeah, I, I just want to know because I want you to get well soon. Osvaldo, hi. I think that mo all of us have an accent. Yes, everybody has an accent. And the beautiful thing about accents is that it's, it's always changing. It's always, um, you're adapting your accent. It might not feel that way, but, you know, if, if, you are teaching English and you're working with other people and you know that you need to pronounce things to them, you know, it kind of changes with you, which is, uh, which I think is really nice. Nora, hi. Hello, my favorite person. What do you suggest to make group work in online classes? I'm using Zoom. Thanks for the great ideas. Well, um, Nora, I love using Zoom for classes. Um, I think in most cases, you know, you're going to use breakout rooms. You're going to either put students in with pairs or you're going to put them in a group. Um, also, you want to teach your students how to use the whiteboard. So if you ask them, so for example, um, this my students are going to do a presentation. I said, I put them into groups of three, uh, which you can do automatically on Zoom. And I say, okay, everyone, I want you to come up with 10 ideas for your for a presentation okay and then those students go in a group and they talk to each other they share some ideas and then when they come back i ask them to give me some ideas each one of the students so i think if you do group games remember whatever task you give them whatever dialogue they have to practice whatever thing they have to figure out or chat about um, remember, they have to give feedback to you. So you've got to ask your students and go through what they've learned. 
And or what you can do is, for example, if they have to create a dialogue about something or a role play, um, when they come back and there are too many students, ask random pairs of students to do it for the class. I think that it is so important for us. And what's beautiful about uh, it is so important for us to get feedback from our students to allow them to do group activities and then to come back and talk about it. I have done many videos about my video go oh there we go video is back okay um uh nora i hope that helps i've got some more ideas that we can check out let's see mine dogan morgul hi from turkey i do not think students should be forced to adopt an accent but i do think that teachers of english should be consistent about their accents what i that in your accent guys sorry i'm seeing something happen happening with my my video goes off i hope it's okay i think it's something to do with my internet connection today my wi-fi was giving me a problem so i plugged in the the link so i hope it works um yeah so i totally agree with teachers having to be consistent in the way that we speak so that students can understand what i also like to do is i like to explain things to my students too so for example with often and often uh, I just explained to my students, okay, well, some people uh, um, like to say often, some prepare, uh, prefer to say often, and it's up to you what you like to use. And um, my students hear that and they're like, oh, okay. Uh, especially if I explain the differences between the, the British and the American pronunciation. Uh, I, I tell my students, okay, this is what you will hear a lot, but it's not wrong if you say it this way. OK, so it's it's good for us to explain to our students that. And I think our students also appreciate um, not not being forced to do one thing. Right. And uh, being, you know, you, you treat them like adults, essentially. So uh, learning based games is very interesting. A uh, learning based on games is very interesting. Could you remember uh, recommend uh, useful apps or websites? 100% Salva, I did some videos on uh, game websites, two in particular. I'll quickly go to my analytics and I'll quickly find those videos because they are, uh, I really like these. The first one that I did was Bamboozle. And it's such a great website because it, or it's such a great website because the games are simple and the students enjoy it. It's some games that you can do. Um, if, if you haven't seen it, I'm going to put it into the link here. And then another great website for that for you to create games is called, let me find that video too, is called Word Wall, where you can basically, you put in the information and you can create different games based on that information. And I'll quickly share that in there too. This is also a great website. These are my two favorites. But what I think I will do, this is a video I'm planning on making for next week, perhaps. Uh, this video is called 20 Great Websites for English Learners. And it's going to be, or for English teachers, it's going to be all the, 20 websites of places where you can find free worksheets or free materials, some resources, ideas, games. And I'm going to share those 20 websites with you. Um, I'll try to make it for next week. So it'll be in two weeks on Tuesday. This Tuesday, the video that is coming out is should L1 be used um, in the classroom? Okay, Bonnie Esther, I've been waiting for your, uh, for what you think about this. Accents are lovely. Sometimes stress can be a problem with comprehension. Produce, produce, exactly. Accents can interfere with spelling. Extra practice might be needed. Yeah, I think it's so good for the students to practice it too. Um, and as teachers, we've got to decide, you know, do we want to focus on fluency or do we want to focus on accuracy? Accuracy is if our students are correct. So we want to make sure that they understand what they're saying and that the way that they are saying it is correct. Whereas fluency, we want to work, we want to build their confidence and get them to speak faster or to speak at a better pace. And I think that is very important um, that some, it's up to you to decide, does this student need to be corrected 
for the class or should the student be allowed to speak so that they can grow in confidence and also improve their fluency. Uh, one example of this is that if, if students use the singular and they say he eat or she go, this is a major problem with students in South Korea, with my students. So from the very first class, I tell my students, listen, I am not going to uh, interrupt you. I'm not going to um, stop you or correct you unless you make a big mistake. And I think if I if I can fix that mistake, mistake, it can help the students around you to understand something too. Because remember, when you try and error correct, you do it for the benefit of the class and that student so that they can hear, oh, okay, that that's a mistake they make. I, I, I can learn and understand from that. And so the, I tell my students that generally I'll try not to stop them or uh, fix their errors because I want them to be able to speak more fluently. But uh, there, except when it comes to not adding the S. So when students are explaining to me, I would, and they say the verb and they don't add the S, I will be like, goes, watches, eats. And I tell my students, it's not because I want to stop you. It's just because this is one of the biggest um, uh, barriers that students have, one of the biggest mistakes that Korean students make. And if you can overcome this problem, this error that most students make, it will put you a level above other students out there. And that is why I'm so critical on this problem. So as, as long as our students understand why we do these error corrections and uh, you as the teacher have to decide um, when is the correct time to use it or not. So that's something I wanted to mention. Okay, and then we go down and we've got my brother here, Good Vibes Paul. Usually he tells me something funny. Um, in the US, we think the British accent is more prestigious sometimes. Celebrate the differences. 100% Bonnie Esther. Uh, I think diversity is beautiful. You know, we celebrate diversity. But when it comes to accents, suddenly we prefer one over the other. But uh, I, I if, if I hear a lovely American accent from, you know, you, you can you can hear the different accents from different areas in the States, too. So if someone's from California, you can hear that. Or if they're from the South or if they're from New York, you can pick up. Uh, I love I've, I've got this friend with the Boston accents. And every time I hear that, I, it just brings a smile to my face. And it's it's so nice. But I do want to say, you know, um, the, the way that you communicate is important and the way that you you pronounce your words and the way your fluency, it, it does have an impact on how people perceive you. And our students should understand that, too. So that is also why they're trying to improve their language. Right. Uh, Loser, my accent is my accent is British. I work with an English institute. I was really surprised when the Canadian director asked me to work with them. My question was, why me? The answer was, because of your accent. The students need to listen to other accents too. What a great reason, loser. Um, yeah, I think more people should have that. The only difference is, you know, um, your director or whoever is in charge, it is their decision. If, you, if you're working, it's also if the students want to learn a British accent, many students um, want to focus on one accent then, you know, if you can provide them with it, then that's great. And I, I think it's uh, your director is 100% correct in trying to expose your students to all these beautiful accents. Mm, let's see, Miriam, it's Teacher's Day in Iran. Happy Teacher's Day, Miriam. Guys, just gonna drink a little bit. Last week, I forgot my, um, my tumbler. I was so thirsty and I just went, through but i usually drink once or twice during an uh, a live stream how is everyone doing um yeah it's i'm, I'm doing really well mm, things are getting better uh, my classes are moving on uh, i'm going on trips i'm trying to stay active i'm really waiting for summer to get here and i'm trying to make plans for summer um and then with the content i'm bringing out a video on tuesday and I've got three or four videos I'm trying to shoot for the future. We'll see how it goes. And remember, if you have any questions, if there are some videos that you would like to see, um, please let me know. Um, I always make videos if uh, you guys want it. That's what I do. 
Uh, Ping, in the Philippines, we use American English, but we have our own Filipino accent. I love the Filipino accent. It's so nice. Yes, uh, I think uh, the Philippines is one of the countries where um, a, a lot of students go there to, to study English because their accents are so... Because I think uh, Filipinos in general have a strong grasp on language. Um, not everyone, but I think in general, because many people go there and you communicate with them, and I can definitely hear the Filipino accent. I just love it. It's so good. Sophia Vergara, thank you. See, my brother can read my mind. It was bothering me. What's her name again? Sophia or something. And my brother's like, Sophia uh, Vergara. Thanks, Doc. Uh, thank you, Paul. Y you know, he can read my mind what I wanted to say. Q King. It's been quite hectic. The attendance in my school was just 33% today. So I just did my very first hybrid class. It's quite interesting. Q King, um, yeah, hybrid is tough. I'm doing hybrids at the moment where you have students in class and you have students online. And while I think of myself as a very good online teacher and an okay-ish uh, um, teacher in real life, um, it's 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 a different ball game when you have to do both at the same time. Uh, my suggestion is to just do everything on the computer. If you've got a projector, if if you have one, the students in class can see it and they can work from there. And what I do is I always tell my students on Zoom that the students in class are my favorite, and I always you know I always treat them better. Or I so for example when they can pick their time or. It, when they have to do their presentation, I let the students in class pick first because I tell the students on Zoom, they are my favorite. They are here uh, just as a joke, obviously. Um, and then the other thing is um, last week, I think it was my Thursday class. Um, I, I, I have this class and it was going it was going well, but I felt like a lot of students were getting lazy online my students in class were great we were working together i put them into groups i put them into groups online but the students in the uh, online they were getting lazy and i think as teachers it is our job to lecture our students when they do something wrong we've got to tell them listen this is not going to work so i, I told them i said Guys, um, you're not working well. Uh, I'm asking you questions in groups. I ask you to talk. And when I go into the group, you're not practicing with your partner. And I think we have to do that as teachers. Whenever our students step out of line and we feel like, you know, they're taking advantage of us, it's your job to go up and say, listen, this is wrong. I want you to fix it. Otherwise, there will be consequences. So I told my students, okay, next week you come back. You're going to work hard, and if you don't do it as I want, um, I, things are go, uh, other things are going to happen. And they know that I'm going to push through with it if it does. But, yeah, so if it does get difficult, um, just remember, um, I know it will be okay. Just remember to tell your students, too, that, you know, this is temporary. Uh, you're trying to accommodate them by teaching online and offline at the same time. So... But things will go back to normal in the future. So it's up to them to work harder and to focus on the job at hand. For Quito, I try to make my students focus on phonetical rules to improve their pronunciation, but I can't ask, uh, ask them to adopt an accent. Everyone has his own, and I think that's okay. Definitely. Um, you know, when it comes to pronunciation, there are ways to pron pronounce words that people across the world understand you because we are not teaching our students to communicate with native speakers. We are teaching our students to communicate with maybe other people whose first language also is in English. Because in most cases, you know, um, let's say I'm teaching Korean students and in the future they travel to France. They can't use French or Korean, so they're going to use English. So we've got to teach them how to pronounce words correctly and to how to speak fluently and um, accurately and you know them developing their own accent is important but we do have to kind of coach them and teach them help them understand um, that they have to try and um, pronounce things correctly um, yeah I think that's very important but we shouldn't force them or pigeonhole them to speak in a certain way
Osvaldo, Sofia Vergara. Thank you. I think she is from Colombia. Yes, she is. Thank you for helping me. Okay, where are we? Uh, I think I just clicked somewhere. Uh, Salwa, could you recommend an interesting Apple websites to improve English? Um, I can't think of any right now, Salwa, but uh, I'll do some research and I'll find some good ones. There are some ones called like Breaking News English. Um, let me see what it is. I think it's something like Breaking News English. And then every time there's a news story, they explain it. They've got vocabulary. Breaking News English. Yeah, I think that's a great one. It's a free website. It's very easy to use. They've got uh, lots of interesting articles. Uh, here they here you go. Yeah, it's breaking news English and let's see um, They tell you interesting stories. There's usually just a small ad and They have some exercises that you can do afterwards. It's very interesting So for example, I just clicked on you and there's a, a, a reading or listening about oxygen aid for Indians And it's all about how many countries around the world are sending oxygen to India and then they've got some vocabulary. They've got different levels that you can listen to the story. Uh, and the, yeah, they've got some warm up activities that you can read, an ebook that you can find. And I think this is a great website to use. Let me quickly go back. So it's called Breaking News English. And I think as English teachers, this is also a fantastic website to help us with. Uh, if you want some articles for your students to learn from, go on there. Uh, Mario, hola teacher. I like saying when you say hi, hola teacher. Uh, happy Mother's Day. Feliz Dias de las Madres. So happy Mother's Day. Uh, I think that is in Spanish, yes? Uh, Feliz Dias de las Madres. I hope I said that right. Thank you, Mario. Happy, happy Mother's Day to your mom too. Uh, and your faith is Christian. Okay, so you're Christian, Mario. Now I, now I know. H uh, Hazel, Hazel, sorry, Hazel Caledron Madrigal. Hi, I'm from CR and I love your accent. Could you recommend me some uh, techniques to improve my English? Pura Vida. Mm, yeah, like I said, very important to try and read, um, read more, learn some new vocabulary, speak as much as possible. Before I mentioned an idea on how to mimic or copy good accents that you hear and then practice on your own. Try using, uh, there are great podcasts out there that you can listen to and try and copy the words they say or the phrases they use. I think that's a really good idea. Okay, thank you so much, hey, um, Hazel. Uh, Salwa, when I speak English, I sometimes use British accent and other times American accent. Is it acceptable? 100%, whatever you're comfortable with. You know, you just find out what works for you. Um, we were talking about it before, accents are beautiful. Speak however you want to speak, uh, as long as people understand you. Ya uh, Jaira, happy Sunday again. Yes, it is so nice to talk to everyone. Guys, you have no idea. I'm always so grateful to be talking with you. I really enjoy it. Oh, I see I'm a bit behind. I'm 20 minutes behind. Sorry, guys. I'll quickly go through the comments to read everything again. Uh, Hicham, hi from Morocco. Natalia, I think American accent is easier to pick up. That is why I prefer uh, an American accent for sure. But the British accent sounds great too. I have some British friends that are sometimes very difficult to understand. Even for someone like myself who grew up, I think the reason is that we become so accustomed to the American accent. And um, so, so, but even like some of my friends that speak in a strong British accent, they're difficult to understand if they start speaking too quickly. Mm, let's go. Mr. Mario, I sent some tips from your teacher, Eric, videos to a friend of mine, and she's enjoying the tips. Thank you so much, Ma Mario. Yeah, guys, thank you so much for sharing the uh, these videos and uh, the material with other teachers out there. I hope they help them, and I hope, you know, they can just help teachers out there. Liza, uh, my students know that I will correct them after they have. It's their turn speaking. Sometimes I ask the group, if anyone heard something wrong, excellent. That's really nice. Getting the group to, to fix the problems, to error correct, I think that is great. Russia, what are the steps or the tips to be a perfect, successful teacher? Um, I think there, there is no such thing as a perfect teacher. Uh, as a successful teacher, whatever you can do to improve your students and help them learn, you know? And I think that, uh, so, all you need to do, I think that's a that's a great question, but it's also a difficult one. 
I've got a, a series of videos I did on 100 tips on how to be a better teacher, and they've got some ideas. But generally, the, the main thing is you're supposed to help your students learn. So whatever you can do, do it in your students' best interest. And that, that means that you should allow them time to practice and you should uh, you should give them help them gain the knowledge they need to improve themselves. And yeah, uh, you should do it in a way that builds their confidence and make them enjoy learning. I think those are the three things. Yeah, um, helping your students improve by doing activities that are interesting and get them to speak if it's English um, and share their ideas. So you've got to engage your students. You've got to give them the correct knowledge and you should do it in a fun way that they enjoy so that, you know, they they um, when they think of that topic, that subject, uh, that they that they enjoy it and they want to learn more in the future, becoming a lifelong learner. Body and Esther, yes, accuracy and fluency are inversely related. Good point about focusing on one or the other to encourage and motivate. Great point about the third person singular S. Yeah, I think that's the biggest problem many of my students have. Uh, there are some other things too, but uh, that's something I definitely look for. Salwa, how can I evaluate my fluency and accuracy in English? Um, hmm. Good question. Salwa, uh, let me think about that one. I'm a little bit behind. I'm going to quickly rush through to see, but that's a good question. How do you evaluate your fluency and accuracy? Usually you need someone, a teacher to do that for you to see where you are. You know, it's sometimes it's difficult for us to evaluate ourselves. Um, so I think it's better if you do have a teacher that can kind of see where you are or through some kind of test. Raj, uh, Russia, I watch your videos to improve my English. Oh, I'm so happy. I hope they help, Russia. In the future, I've planned, or, well, actually, I've shot a lot of videos specifically for English learners. They will probably come out in the next couple of months. I need to edit them first. Uh, Bonnie Essie says, I use sign language L and R with Asian speakers to reinforce that feature, especially when inferring with comprehension. Um, needs that friendly reminder somewhere. Very nice. L and R. Oh, that's so good. Bonnie Esther, such a great tip. I like that. And it's a really nice way, instead of interrupting your students, it, you know, it reinforces it. Really good idea. Uh, it's Ramadan, Ramadan in Saudi Arabia, which means drinking and eating is not allowed, and you are drinking live. Uh, I'm so kidding. Uh, what, I'm, what time is... What is it called? Uh, in 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 some uh, some teachers were helping me yesterday. So when you can break the fast, it's called um, in inter. Uh, ah, I forgot the word. What is that word again? So um, uh, yeah, during Ramadan you can eat during the day, and then at night you celebrate. If it, uh, what is okay? Let me quickly look it up. Ramadan uh, break fast. Mm -hmm word it's called uh, 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 uh. tell me uh, i just saw it where is it iftar it's called iftar uh, iftar is the evening meal okay so when is that uh, eaten so that's iftar ah oh, okay iftar mm, okay what time does that start so it ending with sunset okay so it's sunset here in Korea, so for me, it's okay to drink water now. But I hope you enjoy your iftar soon to Imazam. Uh, Li uh, Liliana, uh, from uh, Guanajuato, uh, Mexico. I like your video as well. Another Mexican, you're so welcome. Uh, let's quickly go through. Russia, in Egypt, teachers should check the pronunciation of any vocabulary to be sure. We use both American and British. Okay, that's nice. Natalia, I make mistakes all the time, but this is the only way to go forward. 100%. Suta, hi Suta, how are you doing? Letty has a nice emoticon there. Uh, let's see. Liza, talking about pronunciation, I asked this, the children and adults that after writing the new word correctly, write the word how they hear it, like talk, talk. This way I notice they remember easier from the word sounds. Oh, very interesting, Luzo. I like that tip. See, that's a great, that's a fantastic tip. I like that. Marta, hello from Colombia. Another Colombian. Hi. My students can't seem to stop writing their answers and then just reading them instead of elaborating ideas. How can I help them? Mm, yeah, well, if they write their answers, um, um, I, I like to... Um, 
I like to practice with my students to ask follow-up questions. So what I would do with my students is I would ask them, okay, everyone quickly write down, what did you do this weekend? And they would write down, I went to a cafe with my friend. And then I would say, okay, write who, what, where, when, why, how. And then I put them into groups and then let's say they're four students and then they say uh, i want okay you've got to tell your friends what did you do last week uh, last weekend and then they say oh i went to a cafe with my friend then it's up to these students to ask a who what where why question so they can ask oh who did you go with uh went with my friend uh, uh her name is jenny uh why did you go there oh we went there to drink coffee what did you order so I, I get them, first of all, I do an example to my students of what I want them to do. And it's very important before you do an activity with your students that you, you show your students how it's done. Uh, I also like to practice it with my students as another example to reinforce how the activity is done. And then I put them in, in groups, they do that. When they come back to the class again, I ask them, okay, so what is something interesting? What did your friend do? And it's so much easier if you, if you ask your students, what did your friend do? And then they say, oh, she went to a cafe. They, they like talking. Tell me something more about your friend. She went to a cafe with a friend, Jenny, and they went there to order because they wanted to drink coffee. And so that way you are also helping your students um, uh, learn how to add follow uh, to ask follow up questions and to elaborate on their ideas. Uh, Marta, maybe something like that. But I think we've got to train our students to do uh, to to think and to do things that we want them to do. So if you want to teach your students to elaborate on their ideas, it's up to you to teach them how to do that. Right. Uh, it's up to us as teachers to scaffold. I remembered the word scaffold this time, how to scaffold our lessons so that the students are constantly learning to achieve what they want. Okay, where are we? It's already 15 minutes. We've got 10 minutes left and I'm 10 minutes behind. Bonnie Esther, I use breaking news English a lot. How can I increase the motivation of my students? Because most of the time they don't want to participate and their motivation is down. Hazel, I've got a great video for you. Um, so often, my goal on YouTube is to make lots of videos that help teachers. And over the last two years, whenever a teacher asks me for a video, they say, oh, Eric, I want videos on activities or Eric, um, my students aren't motivated. Then I make a video about it. But many of the new viewers haven't seen it yet. So then I just go here. I find I search for motivation on my channel. Motivate okay found it and I've got a video on how to improve student motivation and I'll quickly post it there for you uh, Hazel uh, copy I like this video I did this a while ago analytics let's see the analytics for it um, it's not doing great but I, I like this video it's almost got a thousand views I um, I enjoyed making this one I think someone from our community also asked for it, so that makes it even more spe uh, special. Uh, uh, Theodora, Theodora, Catalanaba, Bionas Diaz from Acapulco, Mexico. I used to watch this, this show on TV. It was called Acapulco Heat, and it was about a detective, and it just looked so beautiful in Acapulco. Wow, such a beautiful city. Uh, Letty, maybe you can make a video about to get. It is one of the most important words in English. Definitely, I think get is a good one. Um, sometimes when I explain the words to my students, I think it's important to, to um, uh, tell them about words with uh, more meanings, you know, so definitely with get is one of them. What was the other thing? Spend. Spend is, is another one where I've got to explain how they can use spend. I like explaining that to the students. Uh, Osvaldo, I have six months studying in English. <clears throat> you studied six months <clears throat> in Wisconsin. And today was the first day I listened to you. I understood your accent. It is very clear. Thank you for your time with us on Facebook. I hope to see you later. Have a good one. Greetings. Osvaldo, thank you so much for joining. And you're always welcome. Um, Natalia, I'm really grateful for your correction all the time. 
Anytime. Uh, Natalia, everybody corrects me all the time, and I'm so grateful for that. Uh, Salwa, I want to study and improve grammar. Could you recommend some tips or books? Uh, Salwa, um, I think in the future I will make some grammar books. Um, I, I, there should be some resources online, but I can't think about it now. The best thing to do is just to find uh, one of those English learning books that many of these companies find one that you think is really good and then work from there. But in the future, I will make some books or something that you can find useful or make some videos on that. Mrs. Abiola, uh, it says, hello to Mario. Como esta? Okay, uh, Francia, Mrs. Abiola and Mario, two of my longest watching viewers. Mario has been with me for ages. He's always commenting. I love Mario and Mrs. Abiola too. And Mario says, uh, uh, Eric, the most difficult level in English and the symptoms that I have never seen there take me by surprise when teaching in the classroom. Uh, Mario, you know, teaching can be interesting. It can be difficult at times too. But don't let it get you down. You know, um, you're going to see these, you're going to see things in the classroom that surprise you. But the longer you stay in there, it's going to be so interesting how to solve these problems and these issues. Um, you know, you've got to be great, grateful for it because the more you do it, the more you're going to learn and the more you can help your students too by solving these problems. Liza, I use the British Council websites to evaluate my fluency. Oh, good idea, Lisa. Um, Luza, yeah, I know the British Council has some some um, tests on that too. Uh, I wish I could say that um, to help. Intermittent fasting, yeah, that's something I should do to lose some weight. If that, ah, there we go. If that, if that, everybody was listening. Total physical response is really useful in teaching foreign languages. Definitely, Cyril. Um, I'm making a video on how to teach younger learners. And I'm, I'm adding a lot about TPR in there, why we use it and how to use it when teaching. Uh, and there we've got more Spanish. Hope you guys are having fun. Now English is a good. Uh, okay, now English. <laughs> and uh, Mrs. Abiela says, yes, if that uh, uh, Spanish. Okay, la madre para usted. Okay, uh, for Quito, it was a pleasure to spend this hour with you, my dear Eric and the Etiquette community. I wish you a wonderful week. Kisses and hugs. Yes, everyone, thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate it. Have a wonderful Mother's Day. I think the I think next week is also Mother's Day, but I hope you enjoy it. Uh, Mother's Day in France is at the end of the month. Wow, that's here only at the end of the month. That's interesting. Um, and then, Hazal, thanks. Uh, Alexander, my students are reluctant to use English because they prefer to answer any question in Spanish. Well, uh, very important. Uh, the video I'm bringing out this Tuesday is why students shouldn't use their mother tongue in the classroom. And I have some tips in there on how to get students to speak more English. Okay, so Alexander, uh, definitely check that out. Marta, uh, thank you for your help. I just admire your great experience and your willingness to share it with the world. Big hug. Marta, I'm just grateful you guys are listening or if I can help because I know I, I make a lot of mistakes and maybe I don't give the best advice, but you know what, um, just by making these mistakes, hopefully I will also improve. Um, Mario says here in Brazil and Mother's Day is also Mrs. Abiela. I use breaking news too. It's a great site. I think so too, Elsa. Hi uh, to all the mom fans of Eric, just because it's Mother's Day. Hi, mom. That's my mom, by the way. But Nama, you're late. But uh, Purnama, I want to say thank you so much. Uh, Purnama from India. Um, Aka. Kabar, it's uh, Akka Kabar, right? Um, hello. Thank you so much for joining. Um, Purnama actually joined the Etiquette uh, group on YouTube. So I want to say thank you so much, Purnama. Luza, thanks. See you next weekend, Purnama. Hola from Indonesia. Uh, Lala, I try to use kind of online games and activities that make over PowerPoint. Without these items, they get bored easily. Online classes, you share the kinds of context related to it. Definitely, Lala, um, you can use games and that to help your students especially uh, try try out these uh, channels like try um, uh, bamboozle is great for it or you can use uh, word war those are fantastic websites to make games and then you don't need to use powerpoints all the time alexander could you use virtual resources which helps us teach classes yes alexander i actually i just shared it 
Uh, I did a video on bamboozle and word wall. You can check in the comments. It should be there. Check out those videos. They help a lot. Bonnie Esther, you're the best, Eric. Thanks. Bonnie Esther, thank you so much for your great input. As always, I'm very grateful. Uh, Mother's Day in Haiti is the last Sunday of May. Okay, wow. So many different days for Mother's Day. Uh, Luza will be the Sundays and my mom will be 95. Wow. Okay. So, so much different. And Mario, I understood the dates of Mother's Day celebrations differ in all parts of the world. Okay, everyone, thank you so much for joining. Um, I really appreciate everyone being here. Uh, I hope you have a fantastic week and uh, I'll see you all next week. Everyone, this is Eric from Etiquette and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Oh, sorry. <laughs>